Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming along to Rowan Row. I'm Marvin Gibson, I'm chair of Rowan Row, and I want to welcome you on behalf of the organising committee. Those who represent schools, community groups, football teams, churches, and the emergency services. And thanks to all those who are taking part today, especially our Piper. Our active remembrance will be led by two children later on. This is the fourth year I've created a field of public process, proving as popular as ever. It's become an annual part of remembrance in the community of East Belfast. And just to let you know there are two further events tomorrow night and Friday night at 8 pm will be the last post service that we do annually. The name Rowan Road comes from a line in John McRae's famous poem, Flanders Field, where he states, between the crosses, row and row. The poem is going to be read for us now by Councillor David Hardy. In Flanders Field. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow, between the crosses, row and row. That mark on place and in the sky, the larks and gravely sing in fly. Scarce hood among the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago. We live, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up your quarrel with the foe. To you from falling hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. Ye be great faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. The strap line for Rowan Row is East Belfast Remembers. By creating this temporary field of remembrance, we seek to provide a focal point for community remembrance here in East Belfast. We seek to remember all those who served in two world wars and all conflicts since. Those from East Belfast in previous generations and this generation responded to the call to arms and signed up for Keenan Empire, Queen and Commonwealth. Men and women serving at home and overseas, serving at sea, on land and in the air. Those from a unionist tradition and nationalist tradition. We fought in the defence of small nations. Remember not only those who served in the armed forces, but those who kept the home fires burning, wives and children of those who served, those who built the ships and the women involved in war work, with the VAD as nurses, in the munition factories and as parachute manufacturers. Remember those from East Belfast who served with the Empire and Commonwealth countries, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and as we will hear shortly, the Indian Army. We also remember those at the home front during the Second World War. The number killed during the Belfast Pits was in excess of 1,100. 56,000 houses suffered some damage, with 3,200 being totally destroyed. The damage was inflicted in local industries, not least the shipyard here in the east. We recall the police, the fire service, the ambulance services, they always bear the brunt of war at home. We remember not only those from East Belfast, but those who assist this country in their time of need. 70 firemen from the Republic of Ireland came to help douse the flames after the blitz. Remember those who flew in the skies above us to protect us? You recall those Polish airmen who served with the Royal Air Force? And it's great with a representative from the Polish community with us today. We remember we are not the glorified, but the only those who fought or affected bad. And as a reminder, not to let it happen again. At each event we are home, we focus on the individual. Remind people that war brings tragedy to families and individuals. But there's a life behind the statistics. Today we remember Lieutenant Eric Trish Dobson. I'm going to ask the High Sheriff of Belfast, Alderman Tom Hur, to share with us about Lieutenant Dobson. Lieutenant Eric Trish Dobson, 2nd Battalion. 124th Duchess of Connaught's own Platoon Infantry Indian Army. 126 Parkgate Avenue. He died on the 8th of June 1920, age 23. 
Eric Christopherson was born on the 3rd of June 1897 at 8 Orion Gardens in North Belfast. He was one of two children and the only son of County Kerry born William James Dobson and Indian born Violet Mary Dobson Lee Cooper. His father was a bank official with the Provincial Bank of Ireland and the family belonged to the Church of Ireland. The family at one stage lived at Briar College, 126 Parkgate Avenue. Eric Christopherson attended Campbell College from 1907 to 1915. He joined the army straight from school and was attached to the Indian Army. He was commissioned as a second lieutenant on the 14th November 1916, serving with the 124th Duchess of Connaught's own was used in infantry in Hong Kong, Indi India, Mesopotamia and Palestine. Eric died at the Eastern Essex Hotel, Port Said, on the 8th of June 1920 and is buried in Port Said, War Memorial Cemetery. His parents chose the following inscription for his headstone. We have lived and loved, we live and love. His parents presented books to Campbell College in his memory. Lieutenant Eric Chris Dobson is commemorated on the Campbell College War Memorial. Yes, we forget. Paper play for us a lament as we commence our act of remembrance. Let us fall silent as we remember none of those known to us and those unknown who suffered, served, and sacrificed. They shall not grow not old as we that are left grow old. It shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. Go home, tell them of us and say, For your tomorrow, we give on.
Folks, we're going to close our event with the Reverend Ian Cruikshanks, chaplain of the Welders, is going to close in prayer and the benediction. And there's still tea and coffee after that. I think want to get warmed up again. But Ian, thanks very much for coming. Ian. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we rejoice in the sheer knowledge that there is a purpose to the lives that we lead. For our history, for the history that has passed, and the history that we still write today. That all is contained within your plan for the redemption of this earth. Your desire is for all people to acknowledge you as Lord, and to know that love came down to walk among a sleeping people who saw and failed to recognize, as does a slumbering world today, the divine within the sun. But we rejoice in the sure knowledge that you will come again and pray that we may be found not sleeping but awake to welcome home our risen Lord. And may the love and the grace of God Almighty continue to be with us this day and forevermore. Amen.